deep in a holler, high on a mountain, or in a dusty old coal camp. They were a many of a coal miner's wife. She was up at 3 a.m. every morning, building a fire in that old cook stove. She had his breakfast cooked by 4.30. And as he was eating his biscuits, she was busy putting his fixings in a dusty old dinner bucket. By 5 a.m. he started out a walk, and she was careful not to watch him out of sight. She never failed to get down on her knees and ask God to keep him safe, bring him home. Then she gathers herself up, wipes the tears away. She wakes the children. They have to be fed. They have a long walk to school. She fixes their plates and manages to take a bite and a sip of coffee in between feeding the baby. She walks the kids halfway to school. She has to get back, get breakfast dishes all clean and put away. Then it's time to go to the field. The corn and taters need a hoe. She takes the baby out to the field with her, sets her on a sheet under an old shade tree. And in her mind, she's thinking about her miner down under that mountain of mining coal. She hears that old whistle blowing at the mine. Something's wrong. And there's a lump in her throat, wondering if it's her husband. And she can't help but feel heart sick for the other miners' wives when they get the bad news. But the hinge on the door's loose, and she mends it. The step on the porch is rotten, and she replaces it. Coons tore through the chicken coop, she tends it. The coal miner's wife. She spreads herself thin, but she still manages to play mom, cook, nurse, maid, wife, handyman, head of the house, and the biggest supporter. And she still makes sure everyone is taken care of. In the evening, the kids come home. She feeds them scrubs them before bed. Her miner still ain't home. The kids go to bed, but she has water woman on the stove. And he finally makes it home. She fills a wash tub and scrubs his back. Careful to not hurt his cuts and scrapes. And she gets his plate that's been warming up above the old cook stove. She finally has a meal with her man, but now, and it's late. Before she goes to bed, it's just a few hours, it starts all over again. And she prays before she sleeps that tomorrow will be good. Sunday, she feels less stressed. She takes the kids to Sunday school as her man sleeps. She's anxious to get home and fix Sunday dinner, fried chicken. She's happy the children get to visit daddy all day. It's like miracle medicine for her hearing him pick that old banjer on the front porch and listen to the kids dancing to it. The years just went by and he's broke down from crawling for years on that old loco. His lungs don't work like they should and the rheumatoid has come over his body. But she's thankful she still has him and enjoys the days they have together. Now the stress she has endured has aged her. Our sons are minors. She prays daily for their safety and can't help but worry. As they sit on that old front porch holding hands, she tells herself, She'd do it all over again. That's her bloodline, coal miner's wife. Thank you. You are the lifeline of the coal miner, yesterday, today, and 
tomorrow.